you don't have to pay for Obsidian Sync. You can use any other cloud service. I personally use Obsidian Sync as a paid feature for Obsidian because it's quicker, it's easier, it works on all of the devices that you need, and the upgrade for January 2024 actually adds more storage as well. So I'm going to go through it quickly. This is the official Obsidian blog. It came out in November. Obviously, it's been around for a week. But what they're doing is letting you use more vaults. So if we go over to my Obsidian, you can see Remote Vault. If I click on Manage, previously we have the vaults that we had and this was capped at five and then you could be in as many vault shares as you want so I'm in two other people's vaults so if they own it I'm just part of it whereas this one I own it and other people are part of it because it's a collaborative vault you can see you can manage and add people to it but the limits going from five to 10. They're adding flexible storage. So instead of it being per vault storage limit, it's being changed to account wide. And coming back here, what that means is instead of this sync vault having a limit and this one having a limit, this one having a limit, it's account wide. So you can see my storage usage goes across all of those vaults. That means you can have one vault that's really, really big and then a couple of others that are a bit smaller, which I think is a good way of doing it. And previously it was 10 gigabytes. So for those of you that haven't kept up with this update, 10 gigabytes gigabytes was the limit for sync and it was billed eight dollars per month annually or ten dollars a month if you weren't billed annually and that was per vault but now there is an upgrade so there is more storage options and that goes up to a hundred gigabytes so instead of being ten gigabytes per vault it's a hundred gigabytes per account or ten gigabytes per account this is the exciting part those of you vigilant will see i have 50 gigabytes which is neither of those payment packages and that is because there is an early support holiday deal. So if you buy Obsidian Sync before January 1st, 2024, you get 50 gigabytes of storage for the $10 a month or $8 a month build annually. So you get 50 gigabytes instead of the 10 if you buy it before January 1st. If you already have Obsidian Sync, you'll already have the upgrade, so you already have 50 gigabytes of flexible storage, which is what you can see right here. I have 50 gigabytes. I have 5.83 used in my vault of about 6,400 files. In addition to that, we can have bigger files, so the maximum file size is now, instead of 100 megabytes, it's now 200 megabytes, which basically means you can have more as a file that's syncing across devices. And I personally haven't had an issue with sync, but apparently it's going to be even faster, which is very nice to see. But I also want to go over the behind the scenes of Obsidian and showing you the actual folders and files that are on your system, which sync is taking across devices. This is a recent video on my channel, and if I scroll down, you can see there is a template download in the description, and most of my videos have a template download if there is a vault build in them. And when you click on this, you go through the download stuff, and then you will download a zip folder on your device. So on my computer, I'm in my downloads folder, you can see I have the download zip folder. If I double click in it, now I have the folder and this is the vault folder Obsidian uses. If you have Obsidian already open and you click on the vault switcher, it will bring up this vault switcher menu. The list at the side of vaults I've recently opened, so you can see this is the NaNoWriMo vault that I had open. It's in my G drive, work, templates, folder, that's where I store it, and these are other vault folders. But going back to the folder that we've downloaded, I want to copy it out of my downloads folder, so control C on your keyboard or right click copy. I'm going to go to my E external hard drive, control V to paste or right click to paste. And what that's going to do is copy the folder from the downloads to wherever you're copying it to. So for me, it's my E drive. Now I have the NaNoWriMo folder inside of my E drive. I go to the Obsidian Vault switcher. You can see they're a different location. So I want to open folder as vault. Then I go to my external hard drive, click on the NaNoWriMo folder. You can see it's selected the folder. Click select folder. And now Obsidian is opening up that vault folder. And because there are community plugins, it's asking, do you trust the author of this vault? I.e., do I trust the community plugins that are in this vault? And I personally do, so I'm going to trust it. And now you have all of the vault settings that were in the zip folder that I've just downloaded. So I can go to the folder. You see, there's the folders, there's the files. And what that actually looks like on your computer, if I double click into this folder, you can see these are the same folders inside of Obsidian. Book folder, book folder, class folder, class folder, templates, templates. If I click in the templates, here are the md.md, .md, the markdown document files. 
And if I unfold that in Obsidian, they're the same files. Chapter, chapter, character, character. And if I wanted to, I could double click and open the file here. So if I open it with Notepad, you can see here that is all that's in the location template file. It's got class, location, and then the dashes, which is the YAML or front matter or properties inside of Obsidian. So inside the location template file in Obsidian, if I click on the three dots, go to source mode, this is the markdown text. And if we have a look at the file that we opened up in Notepad, it's the exact same thing because it's the same note. If I add text to this markdown file and then save it, control S, it will then show in Obsidian. Now Obsidian is live, so I'm just going to snap this to the side, snap that open. Because Obsidian doesn't require a save, when you remove the words, it's saved inside of Obsidian. But when you come back to the file, because Notepad isn't updated with Obsidian, it still looks like the old version. But if I close it, then open it up again, you can see the text is gone. So Obsidian actually gives you a live updated save version, whereas Notepad you need to control S and then open the file backwards and forwards, which obviously is a pain, which is why we use Obsidian. However, in addition to these three folders, we have the .obsidian folder. And typically this is kind of forgotten, but this is where all these settings for Obsidian are. So you can see we've got two folders, which I'll go through in a minute, but we now have other file types. So .json file type. And each of these files are settings that are saved. And you can see hotkeys JSON is saved. So if I go to the settings of the NaNoWriMo folder, go to hotkeys, you can see these are the hotkeys that have been saved. Because there isn't a default for add embed, if I add a hotkey, let's say control shift E, just remember that the add embed hotkey is control shift E. I'm going to click on Vault Switcher, then create a new vault, call it Test Vault. So I'm making a new vault folder, browse, and I'm just going to save this inside of my E drive as well. So select folder. So now I'm saving a Test Vault folder in the E drive, create. You can see now we're in the Test Vault, which is the brand new vault. And if we have a look at the documents, you can see this is the folder. If I double click, now there is a .obsidian folder inside of the Test Vault folder going down to the settings then going into hotkeys you can see the add embed hotkey is blank but instead of adding the hotkey here because everything's saved the test vault folder and the dot obsidian folder inside of that doesn't have a hotkey json if we go to the nanorimo folder the dot obsidian folder then find the hotkeys json copy so control c go to the test vault dot obsidian folder control v to paste now i have the hotkeys file in there you can see the add template has the control shift e hotkey now something to bear in mind because you're changing the file you may need to exit the vault then go to open quick switcher and because the test vault folder is the most recent one it's at the top of the list reopen that vault then when you go back into the settings and the hotkeys it should now have updated that settings file you put in the dot obsidian folder here so if i do this again if i delete that hotkey file then exit you can see it's still saved here but if i exit out of the vault and go back into the vault go back to settings go to hotkeys you can see it's now gone so you may need to refresh the obsidian vault by either closing it down or refreshing it so now if you wanted to you could copy certain parts of a vault into another vault so if you have core plugin settings or appearance settings or graph settings or anything that's inside this dot obsidian folder any of these files you can copy and paste to another folder and that's what sync is doing sync is essentially just copying any of these files in the dot obsidian folder and inside of any of the other folders it's just copying them and pasting them into another folder now you can see inside of this nanorimo folder we have two other folders plugins and snippets whereas inside of the test vault folder dot obsidian folder those folders don't exist yet so inside of the test vault if i go down to settings and we go up to appearance scroll down to where the snippets folder is the css snippets if i click on the folder it says open snippets folder, but we know it doesn't exist because inside of test vault dot obsidian, there is no folder here. However, when I click on this, you can see it's now opened a snippets folder because it's just created one inside of the dot obsidian folder. So obsidian has made a folder for snippets to go in. Alternatively, if I just delete that folder, you can see we have the nano folder. If I click on the snippets, 
copy, clicking inside of the test vault and then paste. So now the snippets folder, and if I double click, the file inside the snippets folder is in the test vault. And when I go back to the settings, CSS snippets, it's not showing anything, but if I reload the search, now I have the additions file. At the moment, it's not showing anything because it hasn't been turned on. So when I toggle the snippets file on, you can see now we have the, uh, well, all, all the snippets that I have inside of that file. If I go back to the test vault.obsidian folder, I come in. If I delete that folder, of course, now I've deleted the folder. The file has also gone. So when I come into Obsidian and I reload the search, now the file's gone. Now the CSS won't work when I reload Obsidian because it's still using the old version. So if I reload app without saving, you can see now it's the same as closing the app down and reloading the app. You can see now the CSS has gone because obviously the file's been deleted. The other folder is the community plugins folder. So when I double click, you have a folder per community plugin. So each one of these folders, going back to the Nano Rymo Vault, you can see relates to the community plugin, each one of these community plugins. So when you download or install a plugin, what it's doing is it's installing a folder, in this case called Data View, Long Form, Metadata Menu, etc. And it's putting them on the device. And what Sync does is sync these folders across devices. So when I click into Data View, we then have a JSON file, main.js, which is what most of the plugin is, manifest file which is just telling obsidian what the file is and then some css about that plugin and in the same way if we want to replicate obsidian sync manually i can go data view i'm going to control c and then inside of obsidian i could control v and paste it in here but obsidian doesn't recognize this as a plugin yet if we go to the test fault you can see community plugins they haven't been turned on so when i turn on community plugins data view isn't showing but there is a data view folder here and that is because obsidian looks for the plugins folder you can see dot obsidian plugins folder then data view so if i quickly go to browse and then if i install the data view plugin so we're installing the data view plugin successfully installed now when we look at the folder it's made a plugins folder and inside the plugin folder is the data view folder so if i delete that folder and then I come out, you can see data view has now been uh, uninstalled because we don't have it because we've just deleted it. But inside of testvault.obsidian, we create a new folder by right click new folder and then drag the data view folder into the plugins folder. Now we click and turn it on. You can see data view is now being found because obsidian is looking for a plugins folder and then a data view plugin settings and all the rest of it inside of it. So if we go into the data view folder, we can see we've got the data JSON, the manifest, main.js, and it's exactly the same principle across the board. So if you change settings in one vault and you want those settings in another vault, copy the file, paste the file, and then everything will be synced up in the other vault because it's just a manual copy and paste. For those following and curious, you can see I've got main 10, main 9, main 7, etc, etc. These are all JS files, so these are plugin related files that the developer of Metadata Menu sent me. So they sent me a main JS file, and what I did inside of the plugin was delete the main JS, and then just copy, and then inside of here, paste it. Then if I click there, and then go back, 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 Enter, now the main JS has been updated manually inside of Obsidian. And the community themes works exactly the same. So if you click on the folder, it will take you to a themes folder inside of .obsidian. So there's the plugins, there's the snippets, there's the themes. And if we click inside the themes, at the moment there's no theme. We go to manage. Let's install the minimal theme, install and use. Now we're using the minimal theme. It's been installed. And if we go back, we've got the themes folder. Inside the themes folder is the minimal theme. Then we have the manifest and then the actual theme itself, which is a .css, which if you want to code, you can go in, customize, change, do whatever. But this is how Obsidian Sync would work if you wanted to do it manually, maybe a USB stick or an external hard drive. And maybe if you don't want to pay for Obsidian Sync. And of course, that helps you open up essentially any folder as a vault folder with .obsidian settings. So if you do want to have a vault inside of a vault inside of a vault, you can do because it's the .obsidian folder that makes a folder an obsidian vault folder. Hopefully that makes sense. If you do have any questions, let me know inside the comment section below or join the Discord, which is where I answer most questions backwards and forwards.